Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. We are excited for you to join us today uh, with um, another episode of Coffee with the Coaches. So we're happy to have our coffee and we're happy to have you here. Um, I'm joined this time with, uh, I'm joined by Anne Margaret Bolton. She is the productivity coach at Keller Williams Hudson Valley United. And we also have with us today Rita Gildersleeve, who is the productivity coach at Keller Williams Hudson Valley North. And my name is Anna Gibbs, and I'm happy to uh, join this group. I am the general manager of Keller Williams Hudson Valley Group, which consists of those two market centers, as well as um, Hudson Valley Realty in New City. So welcome to uh, this conversation. We're going to talk about goal setting today and, uh, and really how important it is to your journey for success. We're also joined by some people here on Zoom, so we'll be able to hear from you if you have questions in a little bit. And we're streaming live on Facebook, so if, if you're on Facebook and you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and we'll do our best to get to you on Facebook as well. So Rita, welcome, and Margaret, how are you this morning? Doing hey. great, thanks, good morning. Good, so we're really enjoying this uh, series and we're getting um, a lot of good feedback about it. You know, I've been a coach for a very long time. I got certified in business coaching and life coaching about 10 years ago. I'm also certified in NLP. So coaching is, um, is my life. And I think that that is the catalyst to helping us all achieve more and really create a bigger vision for ourselves uh, in our lives and in our work. And uh, it's, it's great that we can come together as coaches and share some insight with people about success. And I know today we decided to talk about goals and goal setting. Um, so I think that, I, I believe as human beings that we're programmed to achieve goals. I think that we are actionable people. And um, the, the question isn't so much about whether we're working towards goals, it's whether we're thinking big enough some, for some of our goals and are we really taking the time to make a plan for those goals or are we allowing our lives to kind of unfold and happen, you know, as it will? And yet, if we took the time to really get clear and create a vision and create goals, could we achieve much more? Um, so, Reed, I see you nodding. What are your thoughts when I say when I say that? I think that it is important that you have a, a, a why behind your goals and a vision for what you're working towards. Like, you know, beginning with the end in mind can be a really powerful way to be able to then reverse engineer what you're doing on a daily basis. And without that, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, especially in our business, or feel like you're working very hard, but you're not quite sure what the end result is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was always and have always been a, a goal setter that reverse engineers and, and really creates the end in mind. Um, and uh, I think when you can work backwards from that, then you can become very actionable and you just, you know, need to figure out what those steps look like. Um, so what, um, when you hear um, uh, of someone who says, you know, I'm not really sure what my goals are, uh, and Margaret, in your coaching program or in your experience, you know, coaching, what are some things that you can do to help people get clearer about their goals? Um, basically, you know, through a, a period of question and answer, you know, we like to get clear on why are they in real estate? Why are they here? What do they hope to do? And what are the, you know, the deep reasons behind it? You know, it's generally linked to either self-actualization or providing for their family or loved ones or achieving something really special. So it's finding out why and what it's going to take to get what they're looking for. And then like, you know, Rita said, reverse engineering, you know, but putting it together and having a plan and holding them accountable to it is kind of how we can get to achieve what they set out to do. Um, something that I heard yesterday that really stuck with me in the MAPS models class is that hope is not a strategy. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've said that once or twice in my time. <laughs> that is true. Hope is not a strategy. Um, so I love that. Uh, Rita, what are your thoughts, uh, you know, or how do you help someone who 
is really stuck or not clear about what they want as, as a goal. Well, I think sometimes people have an, especially um, we, and Margaret and I coach more of the newly licensed agents, and a lot of times they come in with an income goal, and what I find is that it's not necessarily necessarily just to have that amount of money sitting in their bank account, but sometimes people aren't thinking past that. So they're coming in and saying, I want to replace, you know, my salary at my full-time job, or I want to make $100,000 a year. We hear that very often. The allure of $100,000 a year is what drove me, is what attracted me to the real estate profession. Sure. But, but it wasn't, it wasn't just to make $100,000. It was really it's usually because it's going to provide for their family or be able to set up a college fund for their children or be able to buy, be able to retire or, you know, get out of debt or there's some driving motivation behind that. And so I think if your goal is just dollar based, it can be very hard to feel the motivation and to go through the work that really needs to be done to reach it. What's important is reaching behind that and figuring out what is important to you about that dollar goal. And if you can really pinpoint that, then you can create momentum in, in terms of why you're really working, you know, as hard as, as you have to work in order to run a successful real estate business or really any business. Yeah, for sure. You know, I have to say, like, I'm just thinking that there's so much opportunity right now. I mean, I believe there's opportunity always around us. I, I choose to think very abundantly. Yeah, I, I know that there, this has been a challenging year uh, and, and all the more reason to have goals because it gives us, you know, the goals are your roadmap, right? Or the goal is the destination and then the strategy you create is the roadmap to get there. And without that, we can just kind of flounder around. But I, I feel like there's never been a more exciting time to be in business or be alive. Yes, there are challenges. And that, and you know what, who's to say that life is without challenge, right? I think challenge gives us an opportunity to rise up and be more creative and more strategic. And without it, we may not always be putting our best foot forward. So I, you know, I just have to believe that the ability to achieve goals uh, is, is really, it's never been it's never been more uh, opportunistic than, than it is right now. Um, yet you have to have some strategy, right? So one of the things that I know we talk about at Keller Williams, I've talked about a lot with coaching, uh, is, is creating SMART goals, right? So if anyone uh, has not heard of this acronym before, if you write down the word SMART, it, it's an acronym or a process for setting goals. And it's about making sure that your goals are specific, uh, they have to be really clear because your mind needs very clear direction. So they have to be specific. They have to be measurable. You have to know how much by when. Uh, it has to be attainable, which means a lot of things, right? It means that wherever you are right now, it's within reach, right? It has to be attainable. And um, it has to be realistic, right? Because there's no sense in creating a goal so big that you can't achieve success because then that just becomes frustrating and, and defeating. Um, and it has to be timely. It has to be, um, again, you know, within, there has to be a deadline. There has to be um, ways to chunk it down and maybe, you know, create smaller goals monthly, weekly to get to the big goal. So that's the SMART acronym. And, um, you know, another thing that comes into goal setting and goal achievement a lot is understanding how to use your time and set priorities, right? So um, do you, Ann, Margaret, and Rita, do you talk about the 80-20 principle in your coaching? A lot. A lot? You want to share, Rita, and then I'll go to Ann, Margaret? Sure. What is the 80-20 principle? Because some people may not know what that is. So the 80-20 principle is... Rita, just um, talk a little louder. I don't know if it's me or... Okay, so the 80-20 says that 80% 80 of our results are going to come from 20% of our activities. And it's an equation that holds true in more aspects of our life than just business, right? If you look at the things that you're doing on a daily basis, about 20% of them are the really, really important stuff that has to get done, that's moving your business forward. And then the other 80%, the bulk of things are your busy work, your tasks, your administrative things that, that have to get done and kind of working when you're working in your business. So when we talk to our clients about the 80-20 principle, what we're really focusing on is 
identifying what their 20% activities are. At Keller Williams, we also call them our big rock activities. And then focusing your day around creating actionable steps in those 20% activities that uh, um, that you can achieve on a daily basis, following that same SMART acronym that you just said, right? So on a daily basis, what's attainable today? What is, you know, what's specific? What's measurable on a daily basis that when you look at a long period of time, um, if you're focusing on that, those 20% small goals daily, it will lead you to your big overarching goal yearly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Margaret, would you add anything to that? The 20 you talk about that in coaching a lot too? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, in a strategy that I like to use is getting the 20% done first thing in the morning. Yes. While you're at your best, before the day can get away from you, before fires erupt that you need to put out is start your day with your 20%. Yes, for sure. Because if, if we don't, right, we will allow other things to get in the way. And we, it, most people, almost all people have more control of their time in the morning. And that's where you can get really clear with your time blocking and scheduling the activities that you need to focus on, right? Those 20% activities that will bring you 80% of your results that line up with the goals that you set, right? So, so you know, it's interesting because this is really simple. It just may not always be easy every day, right? So, but it's very simple. Create a goal using that acronym SMART, get it very specific and attainable and, and right there in front of you, and then create the strategy or the actionable items you can focus on to achieve the results and get you closer to the goal. And, you know, map it out, plan it out weekly and schedule time to do those activities. And we can talk a little bit about accountability in a, in a bit, but you know, it doesn't sound difficult, yet we're talking about human behavior, right? So that's another thing about goal setting. And anyone can do this. I mean, anyone can create a vision for their life, a vision for their business. I believe that if you can imagine it, because we, we have that power to actualize what we want. And, and if we can envision it, we can, we can have it, right? So the, the question though is, you know, just how do we get there? And, and yet, if everyone can do this and, and goal setting is so powerful, um, why is it that, that people sometimes shy away from goal setting? Or, because uh, I've talked to a lot of, you know, top salespeople, top producers in the real estate business, and some people will say to me, you know, I don't have a goal for my business every year. I just want to make sure I'm doing more than I did last year. And it's, it's really interesting, more people than you think who are in business will will if they're you know honest will share that yet they could they could hit such higher levels of production if they were to create the goal and write it down because some people then will say well i have a goal but it, you know it's in my head so what do you have to say about that why do you think rita people shy away from you know creating goals or or actually writing them down and, and mapping it out so I think a lot of times once you create the goal, and especially if it's a new goal or a new thing to you, some of the things, especially some of the 20% activities are outside of your comfort zone, things that you're doing that might make you feel uncomfortable, right? Like uh -huh. real estate business is a lead generation business. You're right. lead generating. If you're coming in and you're not comfortable talking on the phone, reaching out to people, talking to people you know, talking to people you don't know, that can be a hurdle that you have to get over. And so while in your mind, you can understand the concept of the goal and the activities behind it, but if you don't have the driving force to get out of your comfort zone, it's going to be very hard to actually execute on whatever that goal is. I think part of the thing, uh, part of the, the great point of having a big why is that will quickly, a, a little bit quicker than just having any old goal, get you out of your comfort zone. Because if it's really that important to you, you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. But it's until you get really clear on what it is that's so important to you, it might not be worth it for you or to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, you hit on a couple of things there that I just wanted to talk about. So I think that we as individuals have to get really clear when we think about what we want or we think about our goals, because there is a difference between being committed to something and possibly just being interested in it. And 
when we create a goal, we have to ask if we're super committed. Uh, because if we're committed, we will do whatever it takes, right? So I'm sure we can all talk about or, or think about a time in our lives when we were really committed to something and we didn't let anything stand in our way and we would stretch and we would do whatever it took to meet that challenge or meet that goal. And that's really what it takes. And if we're only interested in it, then we let our emotions really run the show, right? Because on the day we feel good, we're going to focus on the activities and the day that we don't feel like it, we're going to check out, right? So I think commitment is huge and that has to be a part of any goal setting conversation. And, you know, if you're, I think living without clear goals is like driving in the fog, right? Because no matter how great your car is, you could have the, the newest, most um, efficient, number one rated and safety vehicle with the best of everything on it. Yet, if you're driving in fog, and we all have tried to do this, it's scary, and you can't see. And you will drive slower, you will drive more cautiously, and that is what happens in life when we try to work or run our life without having a goal. You also, you also might not realize when you're even, if you're even on track, um, I'll give an example. I was coaching with an agent in my productivity coaching program last week, and we started the call with him expressing to me that he felt like he wasn't on track and like he did need to get back around. And we looked deep into his numbers and based on what he's doing, he actually is on track to a point where he'll probably end up exceeding his income goal for the year. But you have to think about the mindset he's been in before we actually got it onto paper of, oh, that this is an, uh, this is an obstacle I can't overcome, or this is very difficult. And then once you look at it and say, but wait a minute, you're already doing it. So right. is the goal you have set even big enough? Or should we make it a bigger goal? Because you're already on track to hit this. And that can really give you clarity in your business um, where you are, you know, where you are so that you can celebrate your wins as much as strategize towards getting, you know, getting towards a, a bigger goal. Yeah. I mean, if you're taking notes, if any, anyone who's listening, um, goals are, are meant to stretch you, you know, goals are, are never about maintaining the status quo. A goal is about moving further ahead. So in, in essence, you have to grow with it. You have to stretch with it. And as you pointed out, that's why you have to be willing to come out of your comfort zone. Now, the flip side of that is you have to come out of your comfort zone. So you have to be willing to do those things that stretch you. And, and you have to be willing to think in different ways and think bigger. Um, and, you know, the tracking is huge because if you, first you set the goal and then you have to track your progress. Otherwise, how do you know if you're on track? So, Anne Margaret, what kind of tracking systems do you use when you're coaching agents? How do you help them? you know, track their goals and their, their uh, production every week? Uh, generally, you know, we start with, um, we start with the big why. So we know why. What is the big why? why? We said that a couple of times. I just make sure, you know, we use terminology that is so common to us, but it, just in case someone listening is like, what is that? So I think, you know, in the whole goal setting process, a really big component that we haven't talked about yet is mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the reasons that even successful people don't put goals on paper is because of mindset, fear of failure, fear of success, limiting beliefs. Um, so I think getting clear on ourselves and our ability to meet those goals, why they're and the big, why is really our driving force. You know, yeah. it's the one thing that's that motivation, right? That, you know, when the chips are down and we've had a really hard day at real estate, which we all know we have, and we're ready to quit and run for the hills, that if we think of that big why, it brings us back in, like, I'm not going to give up. This is important. This is why it was important to me. And so by starting with the big why and a business plan, you know, and connecting the two, like, I want to earn $100,000. The reason I want to earn $100,000 is I want to have a baby and I want to buy a house and you know, so when you're really having that rough day and you're looking to not follow your plan, you remind yourself, you know, what's more important, mm -hmm. follow the plan and achieve what I want and why I want it versus not following it. So just having a clear written business plan that boils down all the way from the 100,000 to how many appointments that week 
do we need to go on to stay on track? And if we right. don't meet those appointments this week, they follow over to next week. Right. So I would say in any business, appointments drive income, right? So in, so whatever business you're in, if you're not meeting with clients, then you're not driving your income, right? So even if you own a store, we can say meeting with clients is people coming in the door, right? So we have to know that appointments drive income. And so is that one of the things that you're tracking for them every weekend, Margaret? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And before we can get to appointments, it starts with leads and contacts and it right. goes all the way down. Right, yes, yeah, so you have to know what you need to track in your business as well. You know, I think getting clear about your goals is powerful because honestly, as soon as you create the goal and you get clear about what you want, you almost don't even need to know how to get there because the, the commitment and the desire to get there will make other things start to become apparent to you, right? Because it'll change the behavior as you change your thoughts. Like you said, Anne Margaret, you're, you know, you're moving away from those limiting beliefs and other possibilities start showing up as well. Um, so Rita, can you talk a little bit about what are some of the tools that we have at Keller Williams to help people with goal setting and goal tracking uh, and how you teach you know, the agents to use them? Sure, so we have a technology platform at Keller Williams that our agents have access to. It's uh, called Command and it's an interconnected system of business tools really that you can use to leverage technology and make things a, a little easier on yourself. So like Anne Margaret said, the we call it the four conversations. It's another one of these like terms that you'll hear in Keller Williams. Yeah. And that is uh, how many appointments have you gone on? How many of those appointments resulted in signed contracts? So signed listing agreements or buyer representations? How many of them, those clients that have agreed to work with you, have you gotten accepted offers on or put under contract? And then how many closings have you had, which is your profit? So our command system is set up so that you can input uh, the goals right into the system. And then automatically you can log it through our AI, which is called Kelly. So you can track your numbers right on your phone through an app that we have and it automatically translates into a dashboard where it will show you okay uh, this is the return that you're receiving on um, this is your conversion ratio from appointments to agreement signed and so on and so forth and that's the way that you can start to take a goal and then put it into a predictable pattern so you if you know realistically that 75 percent of the uh appointments that you go on you end up getting a signed agreement well now you can again like we're going back to just reverse engineering a big number to a smaller number now you just reverse engineer that number and our system does that for you and now you have an appointment goal that if you just focus on going on that many appointments you should end up if all of the rest of the numbers pan out with a certain amount of income. So in it, uh, the system will also track, like Anne Margaret was saying, your contacts, the health of your contacts, um, the health of your database, essentially. We have figures around what we see is a certain marker for names in your database and marketing, um, you know, marketing systems to your database so that you can anticipate a, a reasonable uh, return on investment and our technology does all of that. Yeah, it's amazing. And so we realize not everyone watching is with Keller Williams, so you may not have access to tools like that. However, if you are in real estate um, and you have any questions about it, certainly reach out to me and I can uh, answer them for you. Um, so if, you're, if you don't have access to something like uh, command, um, and even if you do, there are some other things that we also use um, that and you can find some of these resources on the One Thing website um, with the number, the numeral one in the browser, the One Thing, which um, is a book written by Gary Keller and Jay Papazon. And then the One Thing is, it's not real estate related, but it is about really how to get super simple in your pursuit of very big goals. And uh, so some of the resources like the 135 and the 411 are on, on their website. So um, who wants to take a stab at explaining what a 135 is? Okay, go ahead, Ian Margaret. Um, so basically the 135 is for the entire year. Starts okay. with our big one goal um, that we want to achieve for the year. Right. Generally for an agent, it's generally monetary or number of units. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have three priorities that are going to lead us to that goal and five strategies surrounding each of our three priorities. Perfect. You got it. And you know, um, one of the things that I learned uh, recently from a maps coach uh, was, and I had never really looked at it this way, was that when you create your one, three, five, so it's one big goal, as Anne Margaret said, three priorities, five strategies under each priority, is to get really clear about how powerful those priorities are in the pursuit of your goal, because you want that you want the priorities if, if they were to stand alone and you could only achieve the five strategies under one of those priorities it would still get you to the goal so in other words not to create a one three five where those three priorities have to depend on each other for success and, and i thought that was really interesting so what does that look like it looks like like Anne margaret said i want to earn a hundred thousand dollars this year as your big goal what are your three priorities as an agent? It probably would be lead generation. Uh, what would be a second priority? Listing follow appointments. Up. Go ahead, what was it? Listing appointments. Yeah, that, that could be under lead generation, right? How many appointments to set? Lead but follow up. It could be about follow up. It could even be about education. Like it could be about where you need to grow in your development as a, as a realtor negotiator uh, list, a, uh, lister, listing agent. So, yeah, so it's just getting super clear about how to get to the goal. And then, um, that comes, that one big goal comes from your business plan or your goals for the year. Now you have these priorities and strategies. Well, those strategies have to show up, right? They have to become a part of what you do. So the next tool that we teach is called the 411. And the 411 is helping you take that same yearly goal now and breaking it down into a monthly and weekly perspective. So you have a, a yearly goal that now you focus on, all right, what will I do this month? What do I need to achieve this month so I can get closer to that goal? And by the way, it's not always just divisible by 12 because there are, there are seasonality in your business and different things. So it's gotta be very timely. Uh, and then you work on each week one week at a time, what will you do? Those are the action steps to get you to the monthly goal, which gets you to the yearly goal. And then once you do that, uh, what should come after the 411, Rita? Let's see, we'll test the coaches. A time-blocked calendar. Ding, ding, ding. So let's talk <laughs> about that. Cause this, this is not complicated. I know we just mentioned a couple things, 135, 411, very simple. They're clarifying focus tools because now you get to time blocking, those things have to show up on your schedule. So why don't you talk a little bit about that process, Rita? The process of taking a 411 and turning it into a time blocked calendar. Yeah. So once you have the 411, you know on a weekly, you've started again, like with the big goal, then a monthly goal, and now you're all the way down to on a weekly basis, what do you need to accomplish just this week in order to drive your monthly and your yearly goal? So now to break it down even further, you have to look, okay, so if my goal for this first week, the first week of July, next week we're heading into the first week of July. So you would have a 411 for July where maybe the first week your goal is to go on two appointments or your goal is to start a marketing campaign for your business or to uh, start over in your database calls, whatever it is on that weekly basis, then what you can do is, uh, I think that one of the most important things you can do is set up some planning time for yourself <coughs> each day and each week. I spend a lot of time on Sunday in planning mode. And then each morning, I usually take about 15 to 20 minutes and look at what I have set out as my priority for the day. And the priority has to match whatever is on that week's 411. So now you know, okay, if this week is X, Y, and Z, what is the one thing going back to what we were talking about earlier with the SMART goal, what is the one attainable thing I can do towards that weekly goal today to move me forward so that by Friday, all everything on the list is checked off. And then what we look in and what we like to look at doing is in addition to setting your priorities, setting up your calendar so that you're working within blocks of time throughout the day, meaning that in one certain block of time, you are only focusing on that particular task instead of trying to jump between a lot of different tasks. Uh, so we recommend typically that first thing in the morning, that is your big rocks, your 
priorities and your lead generation time when we're talking about real estate. And then you might jump into an appointment block later in the day or, or an administrative block where you get the 80% stuff done. Yeah. And, you know, your calendar has to match your goals, right? Like we should be able to look at your calendar and know that you're on the path to hitting your goals. And so the 411 and being able to then take those things and put the time blocking on your calendar based on those, those priorities, that's just chunking it down, right? And I just want to make sure everyone who's, who's watching, this is not about real estate peeps. This is just really creating goals that you want to create a plan to, to achieve. This is, this is regardless of what business you're in. Um, in personal goals, this works the same way. So it is not about real estate. It is about achieving your goals. Um, and Margaret, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the other part of this process, which is accountability? Sure. Um, is by doing it each week. And for us in the coaching program, working with our clients, you know, that it's mandatory to send us their 411s on Mondays. And if you're in coaching, part of the reason that you're in coaching is for accountability because we're all human. And as much as we say we're going to do these things and we have our big why and why we want to do them is important, life gets in the way. So having someone every single week in day in, day out, and it doesn't have to be a coach that you hire, you can just, you know, grab an accountability partner, someone who has the same goals as you or wants help being held accountable to their goals and exchange will help you stay accountable to your goals. Just sending your 411 to someone and putting it on paper every week, you know, gets you that, that closer to it, attaining it. Yeah. Accountability is the secret sauce to success. It really is. And, and, you know, I am a very driven person. I've been in sales uh, and business development my whole life and leadership and coaching. And uh, it was hard at first, I'll be honest, it was hard at first to be accountable um, because I didn't have the right mindset about it in the past. And, and what I have learned about accountability is that, as Anne margaret said, without it, we may not achieve our goals really fast enough. We may over uh, analyze or struggle, you know, endlessly and, and um, you know, unnecessarily the ability to have someone to talk to and be accountable to is also not punishment, right? This is not punitive. This is about, I made a goal and I'm committed to it. And if I'm committed to it, then I should want the help to help me get there, right? Because what I do know to be true about goal oriented people is that they tend to live much bigger lives, right? Because think about it, when you, when you set a goal and you hit it, what does that do for you? Motivates you. Motivates you, excites you, you've achieved something. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel good. And you've probably added something, right? You either made more money, your business grew, you went on a trip, you lost weight, whatever the goal was, right? So you've, you've added value to your life and that's intoxicating in itself. So when you set and achieve a goal, you and because of the way we're wired, as I said in the beginning of the call, it makes you want to set another goal. And that means that you achieve more in the process because you set a goal, you achieve it, you set a goal, you achieve it. So your achievement starts to build. And I believe that really people who learn this early in their lives can have much more and they can uh, build wealth, they can grow businesses, they can support people and become much more charitable or come from contribution. They can travel more and do more and, and just be do have right and i think that is the opportunity when you are a, a goal setter and i think you know what we talked about earlier about why some people might not set goals um i think for most people they don't understand the process right i think all these things that we just talked about could be overwhelming or they they don't even know about them so your role as a coach is powerful because you're a catalyst for them to bridge the gap, right? Between where they are now and where they wanna be. So I'm gonna ask you guys a, a question that's um, related, but a little off topic. What, what do you love most about being a coach or a business consultant? What, what is for you your big why around being a coach? 
and margaret i'll start with you um is to take a role in you know helping someone change their lives basically yeah that's exciting right it's very exciting yeah i had about the what got me here was I had an experience that drove me to seek some more out of life and got into a coaching program that literally changed my life. And I was like, wow, it's so powerful um, that I never would have thought to have someone, you know, assist and tell me what to do and hold me accountable to my activities could have such amazing results. That's and great. after experiencing it personally, I wanted to do the same for others. Yeah. How about you, Rita? What drives you? What motivates you to be a coach? I think part of our responsibility as leaders in our company is to open the door that we're walking through and then lead the path for the next person to pick it up. And so that's a lot of what I really enjoy about coaching is being able to help people. It wasn't so long ago that I was a newly licensed agent looking for somebody to show me the path. And so uh, the ability for me now to be in a position to help other people grow uh, uh, is just really rewarding to me and what I, what I love doing most. That's awesome. So um, does anyone who's with us have any questions? You can either use the chat or uh, come on screen and, and feel free if you have some questions around goal setting or any ahas or comments, we'd love to hear from you, you know, as we kind of wind down the conversation a little. Um, something else I just want to go back to quickly, um, Rita, you mentioned about planning time, right? And, and we were talking not too long ago uh, and we discovered through some, some research that Planning time is huge, right? So do you, I think you know where I'm leading. What did you learn about having some time to plan every day? What does that do for your productivity? Yeah, so um, we, studies have shown that if you spend only 10 minutes plan, in planning time a day, it will save you 90 minutes in execution. Meaning That's that amazing, just, ten, right? isn't it? A, I mean, amazing. think of getting an hour and a half back of your day Listen, the market is very busy right now. Real estate agents are very, very busy. Imagine if you slowed down for 10 minutes and that saved you an hour and a half of time. And, and isn't it interesting that I think most people will be um, quick to say, I don't have time. I don't have time to plan, right? Yet it's really, you do have time. You can't all afford not to. You can't afford not to. And all activities will fit to the time allowed, right? So you can you make decisions all day long about how to use your time sometimes it's it's subconscious and sometimes it's more on a conscious level and it just means that you take a stand you take a stand for yourself you take a stand for what you have just heard or what you've learned about the benefit and and that's really the 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 push and pull that i think we're looking at when we make these decisions we have to take a minute to say, well, what do I get out of this? So, okay, my, my natural instinct is to say, I don't have time and I push it away. Yet, if I could take the time, does it give me so much more? And do I gain so much more by taking the time? And would I be less likely to resist it if I could connect with that? But I think you're right. We just can't afford not to. And uh, 10 minutes, we all can find 10 minutes in our day for something. And we do it anyway. I've seen it in my own business. There's been, there was a time when I did not spend time planning and, and when I put that practice into place, it changed everything. And, and sometimes I know some things seem a little catchphrasey, like, oh, this is a, you know, a catchphrase or a term or whatever. No, this is like real life. If you, I'm, I promise you, if you spend 10 minutes a day in the morning, planning your day, setting your priorities, understanding what your goals are, your business will significantly change. I can, I would guarantee it on it, on anything. I just, yeah. I saw it in my own business. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, we have a question here in the chat from Marcy and it says, um, coaching is obviously an investment for someone's business or in their life. Uh, what kind of results do people typically see if they get a coach? I know that is a loaded question because it probably depends on how serious or accountable the person is. The real question is what is the ROI for coaching? So I'll, I'll take a stab at that first and then you guys certainly can chime in. Um, yeah, you're right, Marcy. I mean, it really does depend on the level of commitment of the coachee, right? 
And of course, um, making sure that you have a good connection with the coach. The coach has to really understand what your goals are and you have to have a level of trust that this partnership with your coach, this collaborative partnership uh, is going to move you forward. And if you are ready and you are coachable, then you know whatever the goal is, that coach should be confident enough to help you get there as long as you are willing to do the work. And that's the key, right? Because we don't have a magic wand. What coaches do is several things. Number one, we're not emotionally invested. We're not financially invested in your business or in your goals for your life. So we tend to see things uh, in a very objective way. And we tend to see things from a different vantage point than you do. So I always have described, it's like me getting up on a ladder and looking down on your business or on the goals that you've created for your life. And I can see it from all angles and you are working in it and through it. So you can only see so much in front of you, um, the forest be between the trees, right? So it's really, that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is the accountability that you've heard us talk about. That's a catalyst to get where you want to be faster. And so if you have someone who can hold you accountable and, and ask you sometimes the difficult questions, uh, about why you're not getting there, then a really skilled coach can also help you identify the things that might be getting in your way. And, you know, at the end of the day, at least like I can use Keller Williams as an example, our environment is very supportive. Our environment is very focused on training and coaching and education. And there's a lot of, there's endless tools and resources. Um, Keller Williams is a company that's been, that's built on systems and models. And models are like following a recipe, right? So, so with all that being said, everyone in the company has the same access. No one is, is given this um, material in any different form or manner, and everyone has access to it from the moment you join the company. But why is it that some people achieve success at a much higher level than others? Well, coaching might be an answer to that because we can help you get clear about what you want to accomplish, as you've heard us talk about this morning, uh, help you create a strategy to get there and hold you accountable to it. And also another thing that a coach does based on, on finding the right coach, they may be able to lend some expertise as well. I mean, coaching itself is not, we're not here to give you advice. Coaches ask you powerful questions to help you move forward in your business and discover the things that you need to do to, to get there. However, uh, there are times in, in oftentimes that depending on who your coach is, with your permission, I would say, is it okay if I consult you on this right now? Could I give you uh, some, some information or some knowledge I have from my own experience or knowledge that I know about the subject matter rather than coaching you, can I just give you the information? And that's where I show up more as a consultant, sometimes even a trainer. Um, so again, depending on your coach, you might find a little of all of that. So, so the ROI is, is big um, for what coaching costs. It's a fraction of what you could create in new business production. Um, and, and that's the part that, you know, I, I, again, when someone says I can't afford it, you can't afford not to. Because uh, whatever you invest in coaching is going to probably multiply, you know, at least 10 to 20 times over, if not even beyond that. So um, what else would you guys like to say about the question that I just gave a very long answer to? <laughs> I think you, you hit it on the head. And, you know, I think you have to be a coachable person for coaching to, to see results in coaching. If you come into every conversation, a coaching conversation and you're defensive or you're not willing to budge on maybe an idea, then you're not going to see the results. See, coaching, coaching isn't a magic wand. Like we don't just wave a wand and have one conversation with you. And now all of a sudden you're a millionaire, right? It's a series of small, of small conversations that if as a result of them, you actually can make some pointed changes or do things more effectively or purposely can change your business. But we, we also, we can't change the business for you. So I guess the question really is how open, you know, somebody is to 
taking what they're learning and coaching and actually putting that into action. Because it's one thing to come in and feel inspired on a call and be like, that's a great idea. And then have it end and go back to the same patterns and activities that you're doing. And then, um, and then pick your head up in three months and say, well, I don't like coaching. It's not doing anything for me. That's you right. Know, that's I, a very good point because it's not a quick fix either. No. I mean, it may not be that, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in coaching for a lifetime. Although many of us do just because we realize it's, it's just a catalyst for continuous growth. Um, and as coaches, we are coached. I have a coach, I have a couple coaches, um, but this is not a quick fix, right? You can't just, you know, take like two coaching sessions and think like, okay, I'm good because it's the, it's the consistent accountability. And as you say, those small steps that lead you to the bigger results. And what I would probably say is what is what is your return on investment on your goal? Like what's the return on investment of your goal? And and a coach can help you get to that goal. So if you look at it from that that standpoint, if you're having a coach is and you're following along with what they're going to say is going to get you to whatever goal you set out, then wouldn't isn't it worth worth your worth your time and the, the money investment that's a, typically involved? For sure. Do you have anything you want to add, Anne Margaret? Uh, I love everything that you both said. And I think if we're talking coaching within Keller Williams, we have some really fabulous opportunities. Um, you know, starting with MAPS coaching, and I think the productivity coaching um, offer, not to plug what Rita and I do. Oh, no, it's um, okay. But if you start with Apps Mastery Coaching, you're looking at an investment layout of $1,000 a month and a 12-month commitment, which is a fabulous program, and you'll definitely make your money back, and like you said, maybe 10 times so. Well, well here's uh, an interesting right. statistic. So if we're talking about MAPS Coaching, you can um, visit mapscoaching.com. Uh, so yes, that is, is a, an so, investment of, of 12000 per year. Um, so a lot of top producers or when agents get to a certain point of revenue in their business will invest in that. But what the research has shown is that a client, a MAPS client who is consistently being coached um, year over year, within four to five years, they're earning a million dollars in GCI. So you tell me $12,000 to get to a million. I, I mean, that's a pretty good investment. Now, in the market centers for productivity coaching, uh, I don't want to get too nitty gritty well, with that's all kind that. Of where, kind of where I was we, heading. Yeah, I'm just going to say because we're going to run out of time with, with uh -oh. coaching in the market center, because I see uh, we have a question about how do I know which coach to hire. Um, it, in the market centers, uh, we have the productivity coaches here in place to work with all of our newly licensed agents and our emerging agents, which mean like agents who are in the business and looking to kind of really level up and, and get into that top producer level. Um, these, these coaches are uh, trained and prepared and they've done it themselves in their own business to really help move you forward. And productivity coaching is, is really about the activities, really about looking at what are the activities you need to engage in to get where you need to be in your business. And then uh, we also have you know coaching available for some of our teams and top producers that is more about what they need at that point or stage in their business, uh, which usually is, is, is a more about team building leadership and bigger systems for bigger volume business. So um, there's always something for everyone. And I would say if anyone listening has questions, reach out to any one of the three of us and we can talk to you about where you are in your business and who the right coach might be for you. And if you're not in Keller Williams and you're just thinking of, of hiring a coach uh, or you're, you're looking to hire either a business coach or a life coach for, for some other business other than real estate, um, there's a gazillion options. And if you'd like to reach out to me, I can help you with that too. Um, so in closing, um, what, what do you want to say to someone who uh, maybe is looking at the second half of this year, realizing they either didn't create a goal or maybe they need a new goal uh, based on where they are. What would you, what, what would be your best advice for someone who's at that point right now heading into July 1, Rita? 
I think it's a perfect time to re reset reset the goals for the second half, right? We're entering the second half of the year. Uh, that's something that I just worked on with my group that I'm coaching is really looking at, okay, we're coming out of the first half. How did we do? What do we, do we need to reset the goal? Are we on track for the goal? Do we need to reset the activities that we're doing? And how do we make sure that through the balance of the year, we, we are on track to, to hit our goals? So I think that quarterly is really important to look at things quarterly. And particularly once you get into the half year review, it's it's really important to be able to start to project because especially with our the life cycle of a real estate transaction, you have to start having conversations about the income you want to receive by December 31st, right? And then what are the direct activities that you need to do over the next three to four months in order to ensure that. So it's really important right now that you're looking and taking all of that into consideration. Yeah. And Margaret, what would you say to someone who's like, oh my gosh, half the year is over? Well, from the numbers that we saw yesterday, um, based on days on market and our days to close, now is the time to be planning for the end of the year and the, even the beginning of next year. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, if we, if, if you could put your contact information in the chat um, uh, while we wrap this up, I will say, I think it can be New Year's Day any day you want. You know, like the, the same way that we approach the new year with all anticipation and creating goals and a vision for the new year, I, we can make that decision any morning we want to. So yes, the first half of this year for some of us may have not rolled out the way we thought, or maybe we're on track, not on track, maybe we're above goal. I mean, the, the, the challenges that COVID-19 has presented and other things about the economy uh, has created great opportunities for some. So who knows, right? Some people may be even um, beyond their goal. But yet, I think it's about mindset. You can decide any day that you can create a new goal or oftentimes what I like to see or help someone with is let's look at keeping the goal the same, but let's create, you know, some different plans, uh, action plans to get there. So I think, again, that's what a coach can do is help you decide, do we need a new goal or do we just need to figure out a new way to get there? So um, thank you both for another really good conversation. I can't believe an hour has gone by. Um, and yeah, it, flew by. It, it did fly by, right? And so, um, again, we appreciate uh, you joining us and uh, we enjoy doing these conversations. So we'll let you know when we're going to have the next one. And uh, Rita and Ann Margaret, thanks again. Thank thanks. you. All right, everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.